take pride in is that if people don't like the final call, they expect it. Assalamualaikum, Brother Richard. Well, like Thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm. um, this Thank won't you. be our, our, our last interview, and it is not our first one. Um, but why don't we just go ahead and just first, let's kind of, if you don't mind sharing a, a little bit about yourself. We know you the, now you're the student national editor of the Final Call newspaper. Can you tell for those who don't know who you are? Well, um, um, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I've been in the nation now a little bit over 30 years. Came in in 1986 in the mighty Muhammad Moss, number four in Washington, D.C. Grew up in Baltimore. Uh, came out of school at Morgan State University, went to work in D.C. And um, uh, I'm not going to get into the long story, but I happened to come across a videotape, I mean, an audio tape, The Making of the Devil. And it literally changed my life. That was in December 1986. Basically, I got that tape on a Friday. Came back to a little store they had in D.C. called the Tape Connection. It was a tiny little place. I mm -hmm. sat in there for about eight hours watching video. Wow. That Saturday, I went to the mosque that Sunday, and that was that. Oh, great. Cool. Yeah. Um, so so want, want you to touch a little bit on your, your role that you play right now with the Final Call mm -hmm. So how long have you been in that position, wow. and what, what does that mean? I've been editor-in-chief for, I don't even know, seven, eight? years, kind of lose track because I've been involved with the paper for so long. Yes, sir. Um, and I started, actually, I started in Washington, D.C. as East Coast correspondent and opened up East Coast Bureau under our late uh, great editor, my mentor, Abdul Wali Muhammad, uh, who was an incredible Muslim. Uh, Wali had been a former captain in uh, Washington, so that says something about his character. He was asked to come to help the minister in in Chicago. And under him, of course, at that at one point, at that time early, was Brother James G. Muhammad, who was editor-in-chief. Uh, after Brother James, Sister Dora served as uh, managing editor for a while. Then Brother Arif, Abdul Arif Muhammad, was mm -hmm. editor-in-chief. He kind of recruited me back because I had left and was actually, um, had my own media consulting uh, mm -hmm. business. And so he asked me to come back, and I came back. When I first came to work for the Final Call, we were on 79th Street, but we were in a building across the street that actually no longer exists. Oh, wow. Right on the corner of 79th and Halsted, it was called the Power Building. And that is where uh, the Final Call newspaper offices were. And this had to be about, uh, let me see, 86, I came in. 86, 87, we came, we got... The mosque back in about 1988, the main mosque, Mosque Marion. Mm -hmm. So when we repurchased the main mosque and the headquarters of the nation moved to Mosque Marion on 73rd and Stony, the newspaper offices and videotape ministry, everything moved into the Final Call building at 79th and Emerald in Chicago. Uh, so I started as, I mean, really kind of goes back even before I started as uh, East Coast correspondent. I started as pretty much all every writer we have essentially started at some point basically as a freelancer. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a journalism major in college. I worked for newspaper, interned with newspapers. I was working uh, as a writer, um, not in news, but in public affairs in D.C. So once I came in and you know saw the paper, there was a natural inclination. At a certain point, Brother Wally offered me the opportunity to come on board full time. I did uh, with his unfortunate death um, or murder, should I say, um, in about 19, 
I want to say 91. I hope I'm not wrong, but somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Um, 91, 92. Uh, I came to Chicago eventually to help Brother James G. Muhammad, who was editor in chief. Served as managing editor under him for many years. Um, left at a certain point, did communications work for some nonprofits, and I went to work for myself. Then Brother R. F. called me back. Okay. Yeah, so today it's basically about um, informing our people, developing uh, the newspaper and our news organ, just continuing to deliver solid, good, credible information. So one of the things that I take pride in is that if people don't like the final call, they respect it. So everywhere that we go, for the most part, and we've gone to journalism conferences, we've gone to black journalist conferences, we've gone to all kinds of conferences. And the one thing that I really take pride in is that our work is respected, whether people agree with us or not. We've won uh, national awards for our uh, writing. editorial writing, column writing, topography, design, Um, but we're still in the fight. So our goal is to put the truth into the hands of our people. We used to say back in the day, the final call was the number one minister because it could go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, with the advent of the internet and social media, it becomes even more important. But the work that the FOI, uh, the brothers do, in terms of, of touching people is probably the most important aspect of what we do because if you produce a product and it gets nowhere, what have you done? But what the brothers do in touching people, it really makes the paper not only a newspaper but a tool of resurrection, a tool of organizing. It gives every brother in the nation an opportunity to have a conversation with someone mm-hmm. and to see if you may be able to offer a key that may unlock that mind of that person or at least put them on the path just seeing a brother out there day after day week after week month after month just seeing black men looking the way that we look and acting the way that we act a lot of people take comfort in that whether they buy the paper or not and i'm going to wrap this up with one short example um i was coming home one night a few years ago late on a monday and uh around Cottage Grove and uh, 79th Street. The brothers were out the newspaper. And so I got out and was, you know, working, you know, just out with the brothers with the paper and the sister was coming down the street. And I asked her, not a Muslim sister, just a black woman. And I asked her, would you like the paper? She said, kind of said no. But then she started talking about her experience. She had to walk about three blocks from that bus stop to her home. She talked about how terrifying that walk was every night, but she had to take it because she had to work, she had to support herself and her family. I think she told me about the loss of a son or a brother to violence. And she talked about how reassuring it was, how comforting it was to see the brothers out on those four corners which is usually full of all kinds of activity, but we know by Allah's grace, when the light shows up, whatever's in the darkness dissipates. So for those hours the brothers were there, you had uh, peace and security. And she actually started crying at one point. But this is the work and the value of the FOI. And it's something that we should never forget. It should never be underestimated. And she was really, really touched. So this is happening all over the country. I would just say we just need to be a little stronger in representing our position, but we have the proper position and we're in the proper time. We just have to go forward a little more strongly. Yes, sir. Thank you. And you must have been tuning into my thinking because, you know, it's important that we, all of those who are in the Nation of Islam, sometimes we get put in just a small box. And even though you are an editor of the paper and you're a writer, um, you're also at the same time, you're still a soldier and you haven't forgotten Oh, that. brother, absolutely. And, uh, and with that, absolutely. I know in recent, with all of these things, with the police violence on, in our community, you know, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in Missouri? Well, I'm going to go back a little further. Okay. Uh, so I came into the mosque and what, there was no executive elevator to the, to the suite of the office of the editor. <laughs> I really take great pride in having come to the mosque in, in, in Washington and risen uh, through the ranks. And 
there's nothing like the incredible brotherhood, the training of the FOI. So I came in like any other brother, fell in. Uh, eventually I was a squad leader, then I was a lieutenant, then I was assistant minister to uh, then Minister Abdullah Ali Muhammad and a lieutenant at the same time. Then I was paper captain at one time. Um, so one of our first encounters was in Mayfair Mansions in Washington, D.C. as part of the Dope Busters. And this is a group, I don't remember the year. Uh, but at this point, the crack epidemic had really engulfed Black America. Not just the epidemic, but the violence. And not just the violence, but the extreme violence, the gunplay, and just the despair that came with that. So our mosque, uh, mosque number four, mm -hmm. was located kind of a short distance from this housing complex, Mayfair Mansion. So we went out one day with the paper through the apartment complex. And I remember going through there looking like, man, do people actually live here? Because it really just looked desolate and abandoned. As Allah would have it, a few days later, I was at the mosque on security post, and somebody came and they wanted to meet with our minister, local minister Abdul Ali Muhammad. With the property manager, tenant leaders and tenants who had said at that time when the FOI came through that community, they had had peace. Mayfair Mansions was one of the worst open air drug markets in the country at that point. When we came, everybody scattered. They asked if we could be a, a regular presence. So of course we talked and uh, our captain then brother who later became Abdul Sharif Muhammad, was our local captain. Then he, of course, consulted with the minister, and he and you know Dr. Abdul Ali Muhammad got together. And uh, I remember Brother Sharif coming back to the brothers in the class, uh, saying what we wanted to, saying what we were going to do, and um, it was something because the minister had done a lecture at. The final call. And part of this lecture that always stuck with me were his words, this may not be his exact words, but he said to the FOI, you're not being trained militantly and militarily to stand around the walls in the mosque. You are being trained to go out and to bring order to streets that are full of disorder. So we went that uh, day into Mayfair Mansions and Brothers were staged. It's a pretty big complex, also a very historic complex. In its earlier days, it was a place where some of the best in Black society lived. Right. But over time, integration and as people left and went to other communities, it kind of fell, you know, became a, a public housing complex and eventually the issues that our people deal with were fully manifested. So we showed up and uh, brothers were stationed in different places and the uh, the owners had asked us to not allow people to loiter and trespass. Mm -hmm. And so one group of brothers and it turned out that uh, Joe Johns who now works for CNN who was a local reporter for a news station in Washington came out with a video camera. So the brothers were, the FOI were talking to some brothers. And one of the brothers uh, pulled out a side of a shotgun. And brother Ronald Muhammad, who is uh, probably one of the kindest people you would ever hope to meet. You know, he's kind of big, got big old hands, but he's not, you know, not a, he's kind of like a gentle giant. Not a bully, you know that, except when you break the peace. So the brother pulled out a sawed-off shotgun and Brother Ronald picked him up and body slammed him. Bang! And uh, there was another young man with a knife or something, so he got some too. Joe Johns recorded this. And then it was a little struggle to kind of take the camera or whatever that was about. But that footage went literally around the world and resulted in a tremendous amount of uh, 
news coverage and hope for our people. Matter of fact, if you go back at that time, uh, the first President Bush was in office and his wife is reported to have said uh, that when she, when she saw it, she shouted hooray. And I remember going back to work because I was still working uh, at the, as a public affairs specialist at the time. I hadn't started to work for the final call. And the amount of respect that uh, black women in particular had because there was hope. And there's a whole other incident about that that I'm not going to get into. But that was incredible. That eventually led to, so we were that kind of a lot of, lot of attention. Unfortunately, one of the things that happened was there was a confrontation. Now, this man pulled a sawed-off shotgun on us. Later, there ended up being a confrontation with the police department who came to our command center to ostensibly arrest somebody for what? And uh, the brothers were essentially like, you know, you won't be taking a ride with me. So eventually, the officers pulled their guns and the brothers just started chanting a loud white bar and walking toward them, and the officers basically walked back their way out of the command post. And one of the things that we found was that there was some in law enforcement that were benefiting from this evil. So the minister's call to make our community safe and decent places to live is, is not necessarily new. That call is a reiteration of a call that he's been making throughout his whole ministry. So. Um, after that, we were out on 14th Street, which was notorious out at night selling the newspaper. 14th Street at that point was notorious for prostitution. So we were just out there because you just had a lot of people, a lot of traffic. There was a situation where a police officer tried to arrest a brother for jaywalking in the midst of all this prostitution, naked women, drug sales, whatever, went to arrest the brother. Said, okay, you can, you know, all right, well, you know, if you want to arrest him, you can arrest him. The officer slammed him to the ground, and then once again, it was on. So we fought the police and uh, sent some of them to the hospital. Some of us went to the hospital. And one of the officers hit me with his gun. I had about 32 stitches in my, uh, in my head, I think, right over here. So, you know, we are those who understand the value of peace and sacrifice. And this is the mission and the training of the FOI. This is what the fruit of Islam does. It gives you an opportunity to grow into your manhood and your godhood eventually and to exercise that, not as a bully, not as a thug, not as a criminal, but as a savior of our people. And so all of that, Intricate, intricately connected to the final call newspaper. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and follow.